Hi, Mel. Hi, Linda. <laughs> Usually, Michael does this for me. Oh, does um, he? But we were sitting having lunch with friends, and we love to have people tell their stories yes. of how they got saved, how they came to know the Lord. It's just so awesome to hear those stories. And we thought, you know, Val's got to share these things. <laughs> yes. and, and there was one especially that you had no clue, and you finished the story, and I looked at Michael and I said, I know you're going to have Pete do a video, but Val needs to do a video yes. too. Yes. So if you just share some things about your experience of coming to know the Lord. I think it would really bless somebody. Yes. Look, um, <coughs> yes, I became a Christian in 1976. Um, I, I started my student nursing um, in Lower Hutt in Wellington in New Zealand and uh, lived in a nursing home back then and we used to um, live in the nursing home and go across to the hospital and work. And I had the amazing experience of living with a lot of Christian nurses back okay. then. Um, of all denominations, and um, I lived with them for three years. Um, I think that that whole three-year period that God really orchestrated um, those people around my life. I had Christians on one side of me, and then on the other side of me, and opposite me, um, all along the corridor. Um, I had Christians, uh, strong Christians, that were Bible college students as well, and. Um, <coughs> nursed as well in the hospital so in that three year period I could see that God set me up yeah. and um, towards the end of the end of the three years um, you know um, you know it was coming to an end um, Christians were very concerned that I hadn't become a Christian yeah. and um, I used to go down into the dining room areas and the living areas and um, wherever I went they were there to greet me and love me and they genuinely did because I was looking for that genuine. Mm. I really yeah. tested them on that, yeah. um, on on that genuine love. And many times I'd go out and come home late at night, and and I'd had a few to drink, and they would always pick me up, put me to bed, mm. get me up in the morning, get me back to the yeah. So they actually outworked their Christian life. Yeah. So at the end of that three years, I was deeply, deeply, deeply touched but hadn't made that full-time commitment because I knew that it was 100% and yes. I wasn't prepared to give up some of the things that I, that I enjoyed. Yeah. Yes. But then one night I um, was on my way out to the hotel. I think Rousa wants on, to join us. Here. I was on my way out to the hotel with my friends and I was in the top lift of the nursing home with my keys, with okay. my three friends. Okay. And I, I um, had a, a wonderful experience of encounter with... Mm. The Lord. Tell me about it. Oh, well, I'll tell you about it. Yeah. I, was standing, I was standing in the lift on the top of the nursing home. The and elevator I, for the Amer yeah, American yeah, friends. Yes, elevator. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. And um, I heard an audible voice of God above me. Mm. And he said that he was passing my way for the last time. Oh. Tonight. And um, How did you react to that? Oh, I was just in awe. I was like, yes, I've got to come to some kind of decision here because mm. I had had many opportunities okay. previous but I just couldn't give a hundred percent so because I couldn't give a hundred percent I wasn't going to go there mm. so I, I understood totally um, what he was saying and just days and weeks up to this point of time I was going out at night and going into parties going into houses and mm -hmm. seeing things that possibly were before me mm -hmm. and um, I had several you know guys that were heating this stuff up over on a spoon over a hot plate to which I later found out that it was LSD mm. so I just found I was getting myself into a, probably a dangerous position and I think yeah. God just come down that night and said Val I'm passing you away for the last time tonight what are you going to do with me? Yeah, and, and it wasn't really a threat, was it? It was, it was oh, no. a warning that this is going to, you know, you didn't know that something bad would happen, but later no. you begin to realize God was just really, His mercy was letting me know, you know, you may not have another chance. Yeah, you, you know. yeah. well, I, I think I was going out into dangerous ground that yeah. night, and yeah. I think, and I just felt in awe, I just felt compelled and pr that previous week I'd been nursing in the maternity unit with a Bible college student mm. and she was assigned to me and she was on the other side of the bed of mm. me each time that, you know, throughout that week and she had been witnessing to me. Yeah. 
And that wow. was my, which is now my best friend, Ray. <laughs> well, hey, you know, there's another part of the story um, concerning prayer and your life when you were very, very young. Yeah. Very young. Yes. Yes. Share that part. Yes. Awesome. Well, um, I was the first person to become a Christian okay. in my family. I couldn't, I couldn't through any of the generations, t- you know, find anybody that possibly, you know, may have mm. prayed for me. But um, in the two or three years ahead of my salvation, my husband and I were in Sydney and we were pioneering and pastoring a church. And that's how quickly God moved in my life. I was a pastor's wife for two years, <laughs> which is, you know, I don't, I don't recommend it. <laughs> but um, I was just out visiting some pastors in a country town with my husband and we were just having coffee and we were just talking about where we've come from and... Mm. She said, you've come from my hometown and my mother knew your mother mm. and my mm. mother used to babysit you when you were a little girl mm. and in your cot used to pray for you and her mm. name was Mrs. Nankable and I still remember her name and this lady that I was talking to, her mother was Mrs. Nankable. So God allowed me to, to know, to know wow. where the power of prayer and how I had come to him through incredible commitment to people praying for me. That's right awesome. along. And I'm sure throughout my childhood I would have had that as well. Sure. Yeah. People that would have thought about it and thought about that little baby wondering whatever happened to them. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's oh. awesome. Such yeah. an awesome story of the way that God deals with our hearts and lives. I and mean, He just knows where to put us, you know, in His yeah. grace, yeah. and then how to speak to us. Yes. And it's all about us responding to Him. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, I've been a Christian, you know, 42 years now, but I love the church, I love going to church, I love being a part of the local church, it was instilled in me as, as a very young Christian, but my heart is to go out into the marketplace, my heart mm-hmm. is to, in my, my everyday mm-hmm. walkings. Your example that you had. That you yeah, had my everyday uh, walkings and talkings, um, each day I go out. Mm-hmm. Um, with cells in mind mm-hmm. or you know can I just can I put a little snippet in here or can I sow a seed here um, yeah. yeah so my heart very much today even is you know marketplace evangelism yeah, yeah. it's not just Caring the one thing it's the whole isn't it, it and is. many people all saying they're, that what is the Holy Spirit gives them to say and then the Lord draws it all together we don't have to even know that no. Like the little baby that was prayed for. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you, Val. Is there something else? Anything else? Um, no, only that, um, you know, back in the 1970s, you know, there was an incredible move of God in New Zealand. I hadn't realized that there was a move of God going on when I became a Christian. Wow. I thought it was the norm. I thought it was normal. Sure. Yeah. The normal thing. But there was an incredible move of God going on through this nation. Mm-hmm. And I was just so blessed to be a part of it. Mm. And so much was instilled into my life very, very quickly. Um, I was discipled. Uh, I was sat down, taken through the Word of God for two years. Every day I had you know, old Christians take me through the Word of God. And um, so I was able to be established quite solidly. Mm. And um, you know, we experienced first love. The, the night that I became a Christian, I went to work the next morning onto the ward of the hospital and they wanted to know who I was sleeping with the night before because I just had a glow. <laughs> so they said, who's the guy, you know? And so, um, you know, I'm just very aware of, of the influence. If we can carry his presence, mm. <laughs> if we can love Jesus mm. and, and be intimate with him, what they see when we go out... Oh. You know, we won't, we don't fully understand, but you know, we are the light of the world, mm. we're the salt of the earth. Mm. And you know, um, I went onto that ward that day, and we, I led people to the Lord, multiples, mm. and and my friends did too, working in the hospital back in that because you know, there was incredible revival happening throughout the nation, it was just normal Christianity. Mm. We were allowed to pray for people on the wards, we were allowed to pray with people that were dying. Mm. Our matron of the hospital was a Christian it was Christianity was you never lost your job if you shared the gospel Mm. and that was the norm and so um, yes I would really encourage um, you know if you've lost your first love if you've found that the hardships of life and the experiences of life have taken that from you go back renew and just receive again first love because it's going to carry us in and that first love is is that whole 
thing of when you first met God, the excitement. Yep. The just being overwhelmed with how good He is to you. Yes. And, and, yeah. Yes. And He's been yeah. wonderful to me. And, um, you know, my mum and dad, they divorced um, when I was in my teenage years. My mum walked out when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister and her husband came and got me and put me through high school and then put me into nursing. And so when I became a Christian, the Lord said to me that he would be my father. Mm -hmm. And over the years, um, he, has, he has given to me such incredible blessings, mm -hmm. material blessings, travel blessings, gifts. I've had people take me into places and give to me. Mm -hmm. And my husband, has, uh, has no, he's had his nose out of joint a few times. <laughs> but that promise was to me. <clears throat> and, and so, you know, even though, you know, um, you know, we go through such terrible things can happen out of our control, mm -hmm. the Father is there and he's faithful. And I, he's proven that to me. Yeah, it's like the times when you're a little girl and just crawl up in his lap and there's comfort there. Even though things are still around you, yeah. the comfort that you know he's there and he's yeah. in control. Yeah. And, you know, who can be in control more than a God who's big enough to control everything? That's right. <laughs> we just let him have the reins. Yes. <laughs> he's, got, he's got to give it over to him. Yeah. No. Yes, but he's, he's proven just wonderful. Yeah. And it's been a wonderful life. It's, it hasn't always been easy. Yeah. Uh, but he's been faithful. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Val. Thanks, Linda. It was lovely. Thank you. Okay.